Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NHL games and look ahead to today's games and both the qualifying rounds and then the round robin. Same thing for NBA. Look back at yesterday's games, look ahead to today's games. Baseball, same thing. We'll talk about the baseball COVID situation. We'll talk about NHL, or I'm sorry, NFL players opting out of the season and my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start the NHL. We'll go over the scores from yesterday and look ahead to today's games. Hurricanes over the Rangers, 4-1 to to take a 2-0 series lead. Number three started the game with 23 saves on 24 shots. Peter Morazic, number two started the game with three assists. Sebastian Ayo, number one started the game with a hat trick. Andre Sveshnikov. Jets over the Flames, 3-2 to, to even up that series at one apiece. Number three started the game with a goal, Nicholas Zellers. Number two started the game with two assists, Jake Roselvick. And number one started the game with a goal and assist, Adam Lowry. Lightning over the Capitals, 3-2 to two in a shootout. The number one star of the game with the goal, Nikita Kucherov. Number two started the game with an assist, um, Dmitry Orlov. Number three started the game with the goal, Ryan McDonough. So um, I didn't know that the round robin was doing shootouts. That makes a lot of sense because it's still technically regular season and it's for points, pretty much. Golden Knights over the Stars, 5-3. to three. The number three started the game with three assists, Mio Hiskanen. Number two started the game with a goal and assist, Nate Schmidt. Number one started the game with a goal and assist, Mark Stone. Penguins over the Canadians, 3-1. to one. The number three started the game with 26 saves on 27 shots, Matt Murray. Number two started the game with 35 saves on... 37 shots, Carey Price. Number one started the game with two assists, Connor Sheary. Oilers over to Blackhawks, 6-3 to, to even up that series at one apiece. Number three started the game with the goal and an assist, um, Slater Kokak. Number two started the game with three assists, Ryan Newton Hopkins. And number one started the game with a hat trick, Connor McDavid. Today's game's getting underway in just a few moments here. On NBC, it's at 12 o'clock. You have the Panthers and the Islanders. Islanders up 1-0 in the series. I'm going to take the Florida Panthers here to win this game and even up the series at two apiece. If I'm not mistaken, I picked the Islanders in five in the series. So I'm going to go with the Panthers to tie this thing up at one apiece. 2.30 NBCSN, Coyotes Predators. Um, Coyotes up 1-0. I'm going to go with Nashville to even up the series at one apiece. They're the better team, better goalie. They're good in these situations sometimes. Um, so I'm going to go with the Preds here to even this up at one apiece. Blue Jackets, Maple Leafs at 4 o'clock on NBCSN. I'm going to go with the Maple Leafs to even this up at one apiece. They're home and they should be ready to go. 6.45 on NBCSN. You have the Flames and the Jets. That's a 1-1 series right now. I'm going to go with the Winnipeg Jets here to win again to go up two games to one. I picked them to win the series in five. I believe in them. I believe in Connor Hellebuck, so I think they're going to go up. 2-1 in the series. 8 o'clock on NBCSN, the Hurricanes and the Rangers. Um, I don't think the Rangers are going to get swept here. I think that they are going to win to play another day. So give me the Rangers here. Maybe Igor Shesterkin gets the start instead of veteran Henrik Lundqvist. So, uh, and there's rumors out there that Shesterkin's not healthy, so that explains to why they've been playing uh, Henrik Lundqvist. So give me the Rangers here regardless of who's in net. And then at 10.45 on the USA channel, Wild Canucks. Um, I'm going to go with Vancouver here to bounce back and even up the series at 1. I picked Vancouver to win this series. Um, I think that their offense will get going here. So give me the Canucks here to even up this series at one game apiece. Now we'll switch over to the NBA and go over the games from last night and looking ahead to um, today's games. Um, the Raptors over to Heat, 107-103. Toronto improves to 48-18. Miami, 42-25. Fred Van Fleet had 36 points in this game to lead them in scoring. Goran Dragic had 25 with 5 assists for Miami. Nuggets over to Thunder, 121-113 in overtime. Denver, 44-23. OKC, 41-25. Michael Porter Jr. was tremendous. 37 points and 12 boards. If he continues to play like this, Denver's got themselves another franchise cornerstone player with Nikola Jokic. And that's what they thought they were getting when they stole him in the draft that year. And Shea Gilgis-Alexander, 24 points to lead Oklahoma City. Pacers over to Wizards, 111-100. The Pacers are 41-26. Washington, 24-43. 
TJ Warren had 34 points with 11 rebounds. So, um, still another good performance for TJ Warren. Thomas Bryant, 20 points, 11 boards. Pelicans over to Grizzlies, 109.99. A much needed win for Zion and the Pels, 29 and 38. Memphis is 32 and 36. Memphis has um, not played well, or I shouldn't say not played well, but hasn't gotten the results they'd like. They could have beaten Portland. Um, they came close to uh, coming back to beat San Antonio. But yeah, this was their worst game thus far. Um, Brandon Ingram had 24 points for New Orleans, and Jaron Jackson Jr. had 22 the lead for Memphis. 76ers over to Spurs, 132-130. to 130. The Sixers are 40-27. San Antonio, 29-37. Joel and B, 27 points and 9 boards, 5 assists. DeMar DeRozan, 30 points to lead the Spurs, who've actually played very well in this restart. They've been a better team than I expected them to be in this restart. They're 2-1. and one. The Lakers over to Jazz, 116-108. Lakers, 51-15, and 15, clinched the one seed in the West. Utah, 42-25. and 25. Anthony Davis, 42 points and 12 boards. Donovan Mitchell, 33 points to lead Utah. Now I'm going to look ahead to the games for today. You have six. 130 NBA TV of the Nets and the Bucks. Milwaukee is a whopping 18 and a half point favorite against the Brooklyn Nets, who are shorthanded to say the least. If you ask me, I would personally make this game 15 and a half. So I would take the Nets getting all those points. Um, I think Milwaukee will win this game, obviously, but I think the Brooklyn Nets will indeed cover the 18 because I would make this a 15-point line. And if the Bucks were playing with fans, this line would absolutely be correct for sure. 230 you have the Mavericks against the Kings. The Mavericks are, as of right now, according to ESPN, a uh, five and a half point choice. Let me see. Yeah, it's 18 and a half, five and a half. Yeah, so FanDuel and ESPN have the same numbers as of right now with these two games. So Dallas, five and a half. Me personally, I would make. The Mavs a six-point favorite, so this is close. Um, so I'm not gonna take the Mavs because I'm a half point under. What I'm going, what I do like though, is the over two thirty-six and a half. I really think that um, both of these teams are offensive juggernauts. I think that Porzingis will have another great game. I think that Luka Doncic will have another great game. So give me the. That, um, the Dallas Mavericks to win, but I like the over in this game. Four o'clock on NBA TV of the Suns against the Clippers. The Clippers are eight and a half point favorites. I think that line is way off unless if somebody's injured that we don't know about. Um, Lou Williams is out, so um, I would personally make this line without Lou Williams. Ten and a half, and it is sitting at eight and a half. So I think this is two points off. I like the Clippers minus eight and a half against the Suns. I think they'll blow them out. Um, the Suns are due for some regression, right? I think this is it. Um, if they had Lou Williams, I'd make this eleven and a half. But no Lou Williams. I have a ten, or I'm sorry, a two point edge with the Clippers here. So give me the Clippers minus eight and a half against the Suns. Orlando and Indiana. Orlando is a surprising one and a half. Point favorite here. I'm sorry, this is the wrong line. Um, I think Indiana should be minus one and a half. Um, even with Jonathan Isaacs, I think Indiana um, should have been favored, but um, but not by much, by a half point with Isaacs. But with both teams' injuries. Um, I had to adjust Orlando because of no Jonathan Isaacs. I think he's worth a point to the spread. So, I make this one and a half Indiana. So, give me the Pacers plus one and a half. I think they win the game outright. So, plus 102 on the money line as well. That's a really good value there for um, 
Indiana. 6.30 on TNT, you have the Celtics against the Heat. The Boston Celtics are three-point favorites over the Miami Heat. I have this Boston by two, unless if there's some injuries. So I'm one point off. I have a one-point edge on the Miami Heat, but I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go to the total. I like the over here. Um, I just think that both these teams are really good offensively. I think Bam Abadeo is going to have a big game against those uh, weak Boston Celtics centers. So give me the um, over 220. I'm going to say the Celtics win, but I don't like that number at three. So give me the over 220 in that game. And last but not least, 9 o'clock on TNT, you have the Rockets and the Trailblazers. The Rockets are four-point favorites over the Blazers. Yet another line that is off by my estimations. I think the Rockets should be favored by 6.5. Um, so not totally off. 2.5 um, point edge on the Rockets. So I'm going to lay the four with Houston. Um, I know everyone in their darling loves the Blazers because they almost beat the Celtics and they beat the Grizzlies. I mean, the Blazers are very good. They have a legit shot at that eight seed, in my opinion. I actually do think they're going to end up getting it, by the way, because of their experience and whatnot. But I think this number's short. James Harden and Russell Westbrook are arguably the best two players on the court in this game. And the best three guys are obviously those two and Damian Lillard. The over is very high. The, the total is 244. That is very, very high. So I'm not going to touch that side. I'm going to take my edge with advantage with the Rockets. So give me minus four with the Houston Rockets over the Portland Trailblazers, who I think are the front runners to get that number eight spot in the West right now. Now I'm going to go over my baseball results and look ahead to the games for today. Um, you had the Reds over the Indians, 3-2. to two. The Reds are 5-5, five and five, Cleveland's 5-6. and six. Sonny Gray, the win, Zach Plesak, the loss, Rossiel Iglesias, the save. Home runs in this game, Francisco Lindor, Nicholas Castellanos, and Joey Votto. It's good to see Joey Votto out there hitting home runs after, um, he was feeling COVID sy symptoms, and then he tested negative a bunch of times, so I guess he felt better, and he did not have the coronavirus, he just had a cold or had a fever and ultimately um he was okay enough to play so good for him sunny gray six innings four it's an earned run two walks eight strikeouts era 0 0.96 and zach plesak seven innings four it's three and runs a walk six strikeouts era 1.8 mets over the braves seven the two the mets much needed win there four and seven atlanta seven and four jake with the grom the win mike soroka the loss home runs in this game Wilson Ramos and Travis Darno. Jacob DeGrom pitching like Jacob DeGrom and actually getting run support. Six innings, five hits, two run runs, a walk, and 10 strikeouts. ERA 2.12. Mike Soroka um, left the game due to a torn Achilles and he's out for the season. That is a huge loss for the Atlanta Braves. Um, what's next? I think that they should go out and acquire a controllable starter. I think they're absolutely in play to get Matthew Boyd or maybe they go for a rental on a team that's not going anywhere like Derek Holland of the Pirates, for example. So Soroka, two and a third innings, three, it's four runs for Hawks and no strikeouts, you're a 3.95. It's just sad. That, that was my um, National League Cy Young pick before the season and it's just unfortunate. Now I wonder if I'm going to get that money back from, uh, from FanDuel and DraftKings. White Sox and the Brewers. The White Sox came out on top, six to four. Much needed win for them. They're six and four. Milwaukee three and four. Ross Detwiller the win. David Phelps the loss. Alex Colomb the save. Jose Abreu and Jan Mancata homered in this game. White Sox came in back from uh, four to two down. Abreu hits the game tying one in the uh, the seventh and the eighth. Um, Nick Madrigal had the bases loaded walk, and then in the top of the ninth insurance home run by Jan Moncada. Carlos Rodon, 20 straights in a run, no walks, and a strikeout rate, 9.53. He had to leave the game early due to, I believe it was, uh, I want to say it was forearm. I'm not sure um, what exactly 
he left with. But I know it wasn't a good injury. Um, not that there is a such thing as a good injury, by the way. Um, Brett Anderson, three innings, five at two runs, no walks, two strikeouts, the array of six. Twins over the Pirates, five to four. Good come from behind win for Minnesota. They're eight and two. Pittsburgh, two and eight. Getting the win for the Twins is closer. Taylor Rogers, the loss for Pittsburgh, Nick Birdie. Home runs in this game for um, the Pirates, Cole Tucker, and that's it. And this game ended on a walk-off single with the bases loaded. Um, or, I'm sorry, um, yeah, bases loaded for Nelson Cruz. Um, Derek Holland, five and two-thirds, four, it's four runs, two walks, five strikeouts, area 4.76. And getting the start for um, Minnie was Lewis Thorpe. Four innings, three, it's three and runs, four walks, three strikeouts, area 3.12. Yankees over to Phillies, six to three. The Yankees are eight and one. The Phillies are one and three. Garrett Cole, the win. Jake Arrieta, the loss. Zach for in the save. Home runs in this game, DJ LeMayu, Jay Bruce, Brett Gardner, Giovanni Urshela. Garrett Cole, 6 innings, 5 hits in a run and walk, 4 strikeouts, ERA 2.55. Jake Arrieta, 5 innings, 7 hits, 3 runs and walks, 4 strikeouts, ERA 5.4. The Cubs over the Royals, 2-0. The Cubs are 8-2. The Royals are 3-8. Alec Mills, the win, Danny Duffy, the loss, and getting the save for Chicago, Rowan Wick, who's their new closer after Craig Kimbrell has been a debacle and as a Chicago Cub, period. And Chris Bryant had the lone homer in the game in the bottom of the seventh. The other run came on a sack fly by Javier Baez. Alec Mills, seven innings, three no runs, three walks, four strikeouts, ERA 1.38. Danny Duffy pitched well. Six innings, three in a run, four walks, six strikeouts, ERA 4.11. Rockies over to Giants, seven to six. The Rockies are seven and two. The Giants are five and six. Getting the win, Jeff Hoffman, the loss for San Fran, Wandy Peralta, and the save for the Rocks, Jairo Diaz, who looks like he's their new closer. Um, home runs in this game for San Francisco, Chadwick Trump, uh, Mike Yastrzemski, Alex Dickerson, and for the Rockies once they came back, Nolan Arenado and Chris Owings. And then San Francisco made it interesting in the ninth, but ultimately uh, couldn't get it done. Padres over the Dodgers, 5-4. The Padres are 7-4. The Dodgers are 7-4. Chris Paddock, the win. Brutes all great roll the loss. Kirby Yates, the save. Home runs in this game. Jock Peterson, Trent Grisham, Will Myers, Fernando Tatis Jr., and Cody Bellinger in the top of the ninth to make it interesting. Um, Chris Paddock, 6 innings, 5 hits, 3 runs, no walks, 5 strikeouts, area 2.65. Walker Buehler, five innings, three hits, three runs, three walks, three strikeouts, three five point one nine. So very pedestrian for him. Athletics over to Mariners, eleven to one. Athletics six and four. Mariners four and seven. Frankie Montas to win. Justice Sheffield the loss. Home runs in this game. Uh, Chris Davis that was his first homer of the year, and that's it. Um, Frankie Montas seven innings, four hits, inner run, four walks, nine strikeouts, three two point two five. Justice Sheffield four and two thirds innings, four hits, four runs, two walks, five strikeouts, three nine point three nine. Tigers Cardinals was postponed due to the Cardinals COVID outbreak, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, so games that are postponed: Phillies Yankees due to the storm that's going on right now, tropical storm Isaias. So tomorrow the Phils and the Yankees will be playing a doubleheader straight in Philadelphia. The Yankees will be a, the home team in one of them, and then obviously the. Uh, the Phillies be the home team in the other. 2 o'clock ESPN this afternoon. The Pirates and the Twins. Joe Musgrove and Jose Barrios. Um, Musgrove 0-2 with a 4.76 whip of 1.32. Barrios 0-1 with a 70 array whip of 1.44. Um, hmm. Good call. Um, I guess it is a little easy to say just to go with the Twins because they're the better team. Part of me thinks that Pittsburgh has a shot here to pull off the um, the upset here. Um, some of these guys have had success against um, Jose Barrios. And none of these guys really have seen Joe Musgrove other than with the Astros way back when. Um, I'm going to go with the safer bet, and that's the Twins. So um, I think it's a high-scoring game. Minnesota wins. 6 o'clock, you have the Indians and the Reds. Um, Shane Bieber and Tyler Maley. 
Babe Bertuno, the zero ERA whip of 0.57. Mailey, no decisions. 4.5 ERA whip of 1.75. 640, Rays hosting the Red Sox. Nathan Navaldi and Charlie Morton. Navaldi, 1 0, the 2.45 whip of 1.36. Charlie Morton, 0 1 with an 80 ERA whip of 1.67. 7 o'clock, ESPN, the Mets and the Nationals from D.C. This is the first time the Nats are playing in. Oh, quite a bit, probably since Thursday. Steven Matz against Patrick Corbin. Matz only with a 3.180 array, whip of 1.15. Corbin, no decision with a 1.42, whip of 0.32. Um, I'm going to go with the Nats at home. Do I feel good about it? No. Um, the lineups against the respective pitchers aren't um, out yet. Due to the fact that this is a night game, so the Mets and the Nats have not released their lineups yet. I'm going to go with the safe bet, and that's the Nats. I'm going to say it's a close game. Mets bullpen blows it late. The Blue Jays against the Braves. So this is the first time the Blue Jays are playing in a while. Um, Matt Shoemaker against Max Fried. Shoemaker, no decisions. ERA of 1.5, whip of 0.83. Fried, 1-0, the 2.31 ERA, whip of 0.69. That's a guy that has to step up for Atlanta with Soroka out now. 735, the Marlins. Yes, the Marlins against the Orioles. So the Marlins having their first game since their COVID outbreak. Pablo Lopez getting the start against John Means. Lopez making the season debut. Means, no decisions with a 19.29 ERA whip of 1.29. Only went two and a third against the Yanks in his uh, season debut. 8 o'clock, gave the White Sox and the Brewers. Lucas Giolito and Brandon Woodruff. Giolito 0 1 with a 6.52 ERA whip of 1.55. Woodruff 1 1 with a 1.59 ERA whip of 0.62. The Royals and the Cubs at 8.15. Brady Singer against Kyle Hendricks. Singer, no decisions with a 3.6 ERA whip of 1.2. Hendricks 1 1 with a 4.05 ERA whip of 0.9. So that's a good pitching matchup there, by the way. 8.40, the Giants and the Rockies. Kevin Gossman against Herman Marquez. Gossman, no decisions with a 5.4 ERA, whip of 1.56. Marquez, 1-1 one one with a 1.54 ERA, whip of 0.86. Um, you have the Astros and the Diamondbacks at 9 o'clock. You have Christian Javier against Madison Bumgarner. Javier, 1.35 ERA, whip of 0.6, no decisions. Madison Bumgarner, 0-1 with a 4.09 ERA, whip of 1.09. Rangers Athletics. Lance Lynn against Jesus Luzardo. Lynn, 1 0 with a 0 ERA, whip of 0.75. Luzardo, no decisions with a 1.35 ERA, whip of 1.2. You have the Dodgers and the Padres. Dustin May against Danielson Lament. May, 0 oh 0, oh, so no decisions with a 2.35 ERA, whip of 1.57. Lament, 1 0 with a 1.8 ERA, whip of 1.4. And 10 o'clock on ESPN, you have the Angels and the Mariners. Andrew Heaney against Justin Dunn. Heaney, no decisions with a 2.79 ERA, whip of 0.83. And Dunn, no decisions with a 6 ERA, whip of 1.33. Last week, I took the Mariners in an upset over the Angels. I'm going to do it again. Justin Dunn, I think, will have a better start than last time. Although, Dunn wasn't the reason the Mariners won that game. The Mariners won that game because of their offense. And it was against Andrew Heaney, too, ironically enough. So the same pitching matchup on ESPN as last week. I'm going to go with the Mariners. They're home this time, and they're a huge underdog. The Angels are listed as minus 200 favorites, and the Mariners on the money line are plus 176. That's good value for the Seattle Mariners, so I'm going to take them as an underdog here against the Angels yet again. Now I'm going to talk about the COVID situation in Major League Baseball. Obviously, the Marlins return tonight, and they have no new uh, positives. So that is such good news for the Marlins, who are playing for the first time since last Sunday, on which was July, I want to say, 26th. And... That is such good news. And meanwhile, the St. Louis Cardinals came out with a statement of their own um, not long ago. So the St. Louis Cardinals today have acknowledged that the following six players tested positive for COVID-19. Yadier Molina, Paul DeYoung, 
Edmundo Sosa, Rangel Raveo, and pitchers Junior Hernandez and Cody Whitley. All six individuals made the decision to grant permission and now released to inform this information. Um, and Yadier Molina, obviously, in the statement, says that he wants to come back and play, which is the right... Um, um, it, I know it's the person's decision, but I, it's like the right attitude to have if you really want to come back and play like Molina. That is the attitude you want to have if you want to come back. But I completely understand if somebody had opted out due to uh, the outbreak here. Um, so those players tested positive um De Young made a statement as well. Um, so their series against the Tigers was postponed. And if they have a couple negatives in a row, like how Philly and Miami did, maybe we'll see them play on Friday night at home against the Chicago Cubs. And then we would have all 30 teams potentially in action on Friday. So we shall see. And... Um, the Cardinals, if they are to return on Friday, I don't think that they would have Molina or DeYoung. So those are the really two relevant players that tested positive. Junior Fernandez is a, p- a young pitcher in their system that um, is supposedly going to be really good. So um, thoughts and prayers to those six players, obviously. But Molina and um, DeYoung are the two that uh, they could very well be without once they uh, come back from their... COVID hiatus. And speaking of COVID hiatuses and um, opting out, NFL players have opted out um, left and right. Some of them big names, others um, have not. The deadline for opt-outs is Thursday. Um, A couple more um, people have opted out. Um, Buffalo Bills corner EJ Gaines among them. Um, We talked about Eddie Goldman already. Um, Jeronio or Jeronimo Allison of the Lions, the wide receiver. He would have been their number three receiver. He was a Packers cast off guy that caught some big passes from Aaron Rodgers. Um, Packers receiver Devin Funches. So that's a big blow for Rodgers and the Packers. They were relying on him to be their, their number two or three receiver this year. A big name in here, uh, probably the biggest name to opt out so far, running back Damian Williams of the Kansas City Chiefs. That is a big loss for the reigning Super Bowl champions, and now the drafting of Clyde Edwards-Hilaire was looks even more important as his role with the team um, obviously expands because of this. Um, they'll miss Damian Williams, but I think that Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, I think, will have a huge year and should be the favorite for Offensive Rookie of the Year now with this opt-out. Unfortunate for the Chiefs, but um, this really does open up the door for uh, Edwards Hilaire to uh, have a major, major impact and have like a Saquon Barkley type of, not a type of season, but like a, uh, um, like um, be the lead back in the rookie year type of situation like Saquon Barkley was, and Ezekiel Elliott for Dallas as well. Um, we talked about Michael Pierce already. Um, so the Patriots have a lot of guys opting out. Um, we talked about Dante Hightower, Patrick Chun, um, and Marcus Cannon. Those three guys are very important to them. Marquise Lee opted out for them. He would have been like the number three or four receiver on that team behind Muhammad Sanu and um, Edelman. So uh, that's a loss, but not a huge loss. Um this opens up the door for Ankeel Harry and Jacoby Myers to have breakout seasons for the Patriots if um, they were planning to use Mark Easley ahead of those guys. Um, New York Giants tackle Nate Solder. This is somebody that um, has been dealing with personal stuff. He, he's been a huge disappointment as a free agent signing for the team. This is a loss for them regardless. Um, but... Another opportunity, speaking of opportunities, we're talking about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire um, and how that opportunity awaits him. Andrew Thomas um, 
their first round pick was supposed to start at right tackle. Now I think they should start him at left tackle with uh, the Solder um, opt-out news. And quite frankly, I think that Andrew Thomas would have been a better option at left tackle for the New York Giants than Nate Solder this season. Because Nate Solder's been an absolute disaster for the Giants as an acquisition, as we talked about. And Andrew Thomas was one of the best four tackles in the draft and was my number one rated tackle um, at one point before the draft, before a couple other guys emerged. Not that he declined, it's just that the two other guys that I had ahead of him had some uh, higher upside and potential at um, at points. But uh, this does open up the door for Andrew Thomas to start at left tackle for the Giants at the start of the season. And then uh, the other uh, tackle that they drafted as well in the third round, this opens up the door for him as well. Um, C.J. Mosley of the New York Jets, that's another free agent flop right there with the Jets. He gets injured in his first game as a Jet, and then he's out for the season, and then um, now he opts out. So that's another free agent bust in New York. This time with the Jets, we're talking about with C.J. Mosley. But again, we talked about the trading of Jabal Adams. Now Mosley opts out. Now that defense is decimated. They have a bad offensive line to begin with. But let's face it. The Jets to have success depends on Sam Darnold making a monster leap into um, not like a huge, huge leap, but he could um, have like a somewhat leap. Um, not like the Lamar Jackson leap. I'm trying to think of like a good comparison of a leap for Darnold to make for the Jets to be um, a force in the AFC. Maybe like a a little bit better than what Josh Allen did last year. Um, Josh Allen, I think, is obviously better than Sam Darnold right now, but Josh Allen has more talent around him than Sam Darnold, and that's part of why Josh Allen made the playoffs last year. So um, maybe a little bit... Maybe like somewhat of the Josh Allen leap, but not, but obviously a bigger leap than Josh Allen, but not as big as a leap as Lamar Jackson for Sam Darnold. And then uh, Eagles wide receiver Marquise Goodwin. We talked about Seattle guard Chance Warmack. Um, I think that that's a loss for them. Um, good veteran. Maybe they signed somebody. And then Larry Warford, the free agent guard, opted out. I thought that that could have been a huge pickup for somebody, but it just stinks because he's a really good guard. And it's just unfortunate that uh, he was cut in the offseason. And then uh, Anthony McKinney of the Tennessee Titans, a uh, a rookie um, offensive lineman for them. Um, but I know they're banking on uh, their first-round pick, Isaiah Wilson, to uh, um, be uh, a starter immediately for them now i'm going to do my best bet of the day brought to you by fanduel um i am gonna go to the nba i alluded to this a couple of minutes ago i'm going to Take the hmm. Should I go with the Brooklyn Nets? Now I'm having second thoughts about the Brooklyn Nets and taking all those points against the Bucks. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take Brooklyn getting the 18 and a half. Maybe they lose by 17 and I get the cover. I think that is realistic. So I'm going to stick with my guns. I'm going to go with the Brooklyn Nets getting the 18 and a half. That's a lot of points against the Milwaukee Bucks for my best bet of the day. That's it for the show today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping all the NBA, NHL, and Major League Baseball stuff. I'll have an update for the Major League Baseball COVID situation with the Cardinals. If any other NFL players opt out, we'll talk about it on the show as well. And I'll give you a pick for the PGA Championship coming up this weekend as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.